start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So starting from scratch. Um, <laughs> I I appreciate all of that um, discussion. I also kind of um, I kind of have to identify that that is asking for a lot in a single section. Yeah. yeah. And um, based on that description of equity, I'm not clear how the strategy or actions that are on this list. I'm, and I'm maybe I'm being really detailed, but like. I liked your idea or your suggestion that equity could mean that if a farm gets sold, that the town would be interested in it for creation of a community garden in order to allow, you know, people, you know, of, you know, non-white, non-male, you know, ownership of, of, of farming opportunities. That seems like a good approach. I don't see that reflected in the actions. Like I, it's in a different goal. It's, Oh, it, there's multiple goals, yeah. But so, this goal is what says incorporate livable, equitable, resilient. Um, yeah, we might want to I, I consider adding something to the effect that the so action is that we yeah, would be right. charged with with trying to find places like that that you know that that would help with equity and and livable and you know, all that stuff. And I could see, you know, we you're you're right, Andrew. We've never really done it from that standpoint, but I think that's a great thing to do. You know, it, it would I, take some effort yeah. on maybe a couple of us could. I think I think that we we we, we can have a discussion about like do we agree or not agree. I think we all would agree. The question is, how is it going to show up in this plan? So I that's think, my question. I think the this conversation has has bled into a more broad conversation about um, topics that are included in many of our chapters. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, we're, we're, we're talking about something that I think could touch in four of our five chapters right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I agree, like, I think maybe to try to stay on topic, this chapter might not be the place for that. No, I actually think it is. Um, yeah, I envision that, that explanation being at the, near the beginning of the town plan, mm -hmm. you know, that, like, you know, a section on defining it and what we're striving for mm -hmm. and things like that. Right. In and, it, and it applies to every part of the town plan. I, yeah, I think it, it's a, it's a good idea. And I think we, yeah, I think that that would be included. Um, okay. But yeah, I, if you want to circle back and, and just try to focus on this chapter and, and put a pin in that conversation, I think that would be. Okay. I see Eric has a Sanders. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I'll just, um, I guess, agree with Gary. I, I kind of assumed that there would be a, a definitions section somewhere, like either at the beginning of the town plan or somewhere that would describe, particularly with this um, equitable, livable, um, resilient concepts. Um, I do think, particularly after listening to this conversation, I think that it would be important to have um, so a, a second, I don't know if it's a second definition or what, but within each chapter, uh, it looks kind of like maybe you have this started in here, but um, within each chapter, a what does livable mean in the context of land use and rural lands in Williston? Um, something that yeah. that ties those concepts to that particular chapter to to really emphasize mm -hmm. how we're going to try and meet those goals. Um, or those concepts, I guess, in this in this. Yeah. Plan. Do you want to address that, Andrew? Because it looks like you have that on starting on page one. You have a list of sort of maybe that's a better place for us to start, seeing as we're we seem like we're flying at a high level right now. Yes. So Eric, I agree. That is the the intent is to have um a section that addresses <clears throat> each of those. I think. In our chapters, there's been some overlap between those that livable, equitable, and resilient section and the goal section. And um, I think so far, I've been writing um, goals that kind of incorporate, like, here's a goal. This is why that is livable, equitable, resilient. Mm -hmm. um, and so whether or not that's that's how we should proceed, we might have a like Eric said, a, a more broad statement that um, talks about those in reference to the the chapter as a whole. Um, but I think that's that's helpful feedback. 
So this section is sort of meant to, if we're thinking about this uh, chapter as essentially the ARZD um, as like a shortcut for thinking about it, you've got definitions of what livable, resilient, and equitable mean for effectively the ARZD, right? Sort of. Uh, sort of? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to make so, sense of all of this yeah. as a, you know, as a, as a townsperson. So, um, my, my, my thought would be is maybe we should start here then at a high level of just saying, do we agree that livable, resilient, equitable for rural land use and subdivision design is, is agreeable? Would that be a good place to start rather than jumping into the goals? I think it's a good idea. I, I just, my only, the reason I say sort of is that, um, you know, it's not necessarily just the ARCD. Um, some of these things may apply to residential subdivision design too in the RZD um, okay. with, you know, HDAs, that sort of thing. Um, and that, that's great. That line is kind of blurring, mm -hmm. but yeah. Correct. Um, Can I just, well, before we, if we're going to get into definitions, I just want to say that we do, I know a couple of times people have said, oh, Conservation Commission, we've never addressed this, but we do have a map. We did a few years ago have a map of all of our trails identified, and we did as a group note that there were areas that do not have trail access and areas that do have trail access, and we did identify that as an equity issue. So we, we have like a document somewhere that has that and it could you know be redone it was based on at the time strava heat mapping and looking at like where were people actually accessing and strava has really grown in popularity and use so i think it would be easy to do it again as a group and work on jacob kranz is something we're already doing stuff based on that i mean we pushed we decided to push for something to happen at jacob kranz even though it wasn't easy as right. A result, as a result of that work. So I just wanted to note that, like, this is super important, and I 100% agree with it. And I think that the discussion of equity goes even beyond access to green space and livable, um, affordable areas. And also, we ha we have done a very tiny bit before. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Kim. Um, well, I kind of, based on how we open this discussion up, I do like the idea of starting here rather than jumping right into the goals, um, because it sounds like we have some thoughts on what these salient town goals would mean for rural land use and subdivision. So um, I, for one, would like to start with <clears throat> these three definitions, livable, resilient, and equitable. Um, and I'm looking at this livable definition of open space for recreation, farms and small businesses as public gathering places, cultural value, distinction between public accessibility and privately owned business. I like livable for wildlife. Mm -hmm. that, I like that, that. That's a nice thing to say. <laughs> now we have to figure out how to make that happen. Yeah. I also um, uh, having just um, having just come back from out of state was in a region where there were um, rec paths connecting um, towns that were, you know, 10, 12 miles apart. I was in the area of Colorado and it really struck me that there was connectivity between really like far flung, you know, this was like a county wide left effort. And I think, you know, to Vermont's detriment, we don't have, a county to organize things, which is a serious problem, especially in Chittenden County, because we could use some county-wide support. But like, regardless, um, it really made me think about what is effectively like a rural area, what is livable, and like having access to those, you know, like. So when I see open space for recreation, I also I also see bike paths and connectivity and like non-vehicular travel in the rural areas. And I think we have 
focused way too much on just getting new subdivisions to build sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see an actual town commitment to like a, a town town-wide approach to non-vehicular travel because I think a lot of people consider that to be a form of recreation. Mm -hmm. I think it exists already to some extent the sidewalk at least connections around town they have a plan for what's next and stuff I, I believe in the don't they? The official map. The has, official map. Yeah. yeah. But no plan. They actually build it. That's yeah the well they've done the pieces. Plans. You're you're right. Official map is is I I mean I see it more so used when we have something, a parcel that comes in to be developed, mm -hmm. it's a tool to use to say, yeah. hey, there's supposed to be a That's path or right. sidewalk here. And it's been built incrementally and- um, Yeah, and it takes a, forever. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, that doesn't, that's not to say that there aren't places that uh, connections have been built, but- I don't mean to dominate with my bugaboo topic, which you all are aware of, but what, how do we feel about this general livability definition? Kim has a comment also. Yeah, Kim put in the chat the EPA's definition. Kim, do you want to share that? I just like the EPA's definition of environmental justice, and I think it's been adopted in a lot of um, different contexts. The other, I mean, like the other like pre-standing definitions that like jump to my head are the UN's sustainability development goals, which have a, like a lot of human health and well-being incorporated into them and i think that like any time that we can think like really holistically about the fact that you can't divorce conservation from human health and well-being like no matter what you do there's going to be a human impact um and so i guess i just would i think it's great if we have a conversation about this but i also think that there are really smart people around the world who have thought deeply about these definitions for a long time and we could look mm -hmm. at those before we try to write our own and i mean i don't know if we're really prepared to do that today but it's just a thought that there is some mm -hmm. pretty good stuff out there pre-existing are we and i guess like the, the other thing that i would just say is um th and this is something that i don't think that we have addressed as a group but i do think comes into play in this topic is that like necessarily when we when we conserve we're taking something out of play in some way right and there's there's often like a negative equity consequence associated with conservation there's also a positive equity consequence associated with conservation but i just want to make sure that both things are discussed and just if you're like, I don't understand what that means, which would be a fair comment. If you, for example, look at Adirondack Park, an amazing conservation project, right? This, um, Gary and I have a colleague that wrote a book all about just this. Um, and the sort of dark underbelly of that project is that there are no jobs in Adirondack Park and it is like yeah. the ultimate example of white rural poverty in America, right? Um, so that like there are, the, the setting aside, the conserving of land is not necessarily net positive in terms of equity. And we should just like make not, I'm not saying don't conserve, conserve, but um, we should just be, make sure that we're thoughtful about our language and our thinking. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I guess um, what is meant by a distinction between public accessibility and privately owned business. I mean, obviously you have a privately owned business and you can't, people just can't park in their driveway and take off on their bike. But why was that put in there? Because um, there are businesses, let's let's say um, Eichen Farm mm -hmm. is an example of a privately owned piece of land that is accessible to the public sometimes. And so the, the distinction that, uh, you know, a, a trail that you can go park and walk at any time you like versus um, Aishan Farm, they're two different resources that are both valuable and both contribute to, you know, cultural benefits in Williston. Uh, but knowing that privately owned businesses can change, whereas parks are, are more um, oh, I see. There's a distinction between those two in making Wilson livable. I see. Yeah, and I think the maybe 
the clarifying point is that both of those things are valuable, but they're they're different. They are different. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and there's and there's a lot of in between that too. Like Isham's mm -hmm. is more publicly accessed than others because we helped buy the development rights or the conserved that land and such. So it's different than just a business beside mm -hmm. a trailhead or something yeah, right. that has no conservation mission or anything like that. So yeah. should um <clears throat> should farms should should that bullet be more than just farms and small businesses then? I mean because Sounds like it could be it could be other things like farms, gardens, parks, and small businesses. It's a, it seems like a much broader um, topic. I also want to yeah yeah maybe like distinction between um, the uh, value and function of public versus privately owned land in mm -hmm. the, in rural Wilson right. Mm -hmm. Can explain, yeah, that a little bit further. And public includes parks and conserved areas and stuff that yeah. private includes businesses, farms, farms that have been partially conserved. So also a private, a public gathering place where they want you to put money on the counter, right? Mm -hmm. As well, whereas a park is <laughs> not necessarily a financial transaction, right? It's a barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what do we think about resilient? in this area i like i like that I, I see economic and ecological i also i would add personally from flood resilience there's also um pests uh and invasives mm -hmm. and resiliency against the uh, against um other natural maybe that falls with recreation open space for people to use and enjoy and it's you can't you can enjoy it. I guess that's only talking about uh, open space, though, and not. But yeah, I agree. I else? agree as well, and and frankly, I'm a little disappointed in myself for not thinking of invasive species. Uh, so good call, David. Um, I also wanted to suggest in here um, resilience to drought and heat resilience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we're gonna have to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, it's typically fun to talk about more with urban space, but in terms of like heat islands, but even just something as simple as ne there needing to be shade at parking areas or trailheads. Mm -hmm. And along streams, if you're talking about ecological resilience. Yeah. Like cool that water down. Yeah. Sorry, Gary. Sorry. Well, I was just thinking you could capture a lot of that stuff under kind of climate extremes or resilience mm -hmm. from climate extremes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's you yeah. could yeah I like that Gary that's kind of good including yeah yeah, yeah. So, climate resilience against climate impacts you know which includes like you know right. low Off frequency way. high duration or or high, low frequency high precipitation amounts you know like yeah, um, yeah. Like yesterday drought and flood yesterday we got or two days ago we two got days ago. an inch and a half of rain in twenty minutes yeah Austin. I know Old wow. Times. Yeah. yeah, I was watching the radar. It's <clears throat> One other call out is ecological should probably include biodiversity. Um, I feel like that's a component we should be yeah, thinking about. And it, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of what we choose to conserve, protect, et cetera. Habitat corridors, that thing as well. This isn't the conservation right. chapter, but yeah, ARZD is where we are focused on conservation, so sure. it has to show up somehow. Yeah. We could we yeah. could add to this for about the next half hour. <laughs> yeah, and just like oh, that's why I was thinking of more general terms sure. that yeah. include some some of these things. So then let's examples or something. Let's look at equitable <clears> then. Can I just add one more thing to livable before we end? Yeah, uh, where it says livable for wildlife, I think one of the things that. I think it's very applicable for the ARZD is uh, human wildlife conflict and the role that how we choose to do mm -hmm. things. The ARZD is going to impact how much conflict there is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, e even just something as simple as the solar project that we just heard last meeting, if bear can't travel through that yeah. field, they're going to go around. And if they're going mm -hmm. around, they might now be going through 
people's properties they weren't previously going. So it's just like thinking about that landscape mm -hmm. aspect and conflict with wildlife. And I think you also pointed out in some of those comments that it's also the fact that wildlife are not allowed in there anymore will will alter the the plant species and herbivory and you know all kinds of stuff in that wetland that's not natural. I mean, that's a hundred percent what I was thinking when I just said habitat corridor. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe that's more appropriate in the livable for wildlife section. It can be both. Yeah. 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 Like, sorry, I'm I'm good for resilience now. <laughs> or for uh, <laughs> what are we on equitable now? <laughs> yeah. Equitable. Let's talk about equity. These are similar topics to what we've discussed. Mm -hmm. There's your bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, David. It's interesting that this section we have a little definition in there or a description of that first bullet I'm referring to. What is it related to? I mean, and, but yet we don't in any of the other sections. We don't say, you know, here's why wildlife is important, or here's why. But maybe it's because it's a new, newer type of thing. That's because this is still pretty rough. Yeah. 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 So one Frankly. thing that um, <clears throat> we could have new businesses create the outdoor spaces, just like they create the bike path in front of there. I just think that's just yeah, why that's not? Point. Yeah, yeah. Why not have a park where people on bikes can stop if they're either near the growth center or on a bike route, maybe it's route 2A or two rather, 2A too, where you just, they have set up. I keep thinking about the new hotel in Blair Park. It's like right on the bike path. You walk out the door, it's right there. And they have some plants and things there. They could have benches and a place to sit or I don't know, make it, that's I think that's a great idea. It, know, just, it could be just like you say, we require sidewalks. Why not require something that'll enhance resilience and equity? And, right. And then well. mm -hmm. people have those outdoor spaces. They have them all over the place. They don't have to get in a car and drive. They have a place to sit or stroll around. I tell you, when I go for my run through um that whole development now by the grocery store and the uh, home too mm -hmm. there's nothing welcoming about yeah any of those spaces unless yeah, you are putting yeah. a credit card down yeah. and like staying at the hotel or getting a table at the restaurant right. it is like as a runner there's just nowhere to stop right I, i'm 100 percent. yeah home too could have easily put in a little park just like yeah just like the new marina at the waterfront in burlington they were forced to put in a park and make their dock public accessible. So why can't you just do that? Yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. a great idea. I think this that's a really good point. And we're having conversations um, as part of our working landscapes chapter, um, which is, again, these conversations will, will spill over. But we're talking about new uses or different allowed uses. And mm -hmm. your point was kind of, maybe it's both, maybe it's for in the road center, but also in rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, but as we talk about uses that are allowed in rural areas, maybe there's some sort of requirement for uh, more public open space, more public access if a use is going to be allowed. Right. Um, I will uh, I will often stop at the Catamount. Uh, after a long bike ride, I will stop at Catamount Center because it's on my way home to refill my water bottle. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's nothing else like that anywhere in Williston where you can just stop, fill up a water bottle and continue along your along your way. That could be used as a model for how other rural developments could be sort of just made accessible to the public. And whether it's a bench or it's a yeah. bottle filling station or something like that, that would be a good example of how that could be applicable to this more rural mm -hmm. character area. And just make it more welcoming for people. Yeah. I think I like there's it. a 
there's like a um bottle filling station or there used to be like near the soccer fields but it oh it's always out of order and my kids are like constantly trying to drink out of it so the uh, i think like the other part of this is like figure out what we already have and maintain it Right. <laughs> yes. That's a very good point. Maintain infrastructure, maintain what you have. <clears throat> Absolutely. So I, I'm wondering, um, Dave, maybe you can lead this, but um, what next steps do you think we should um, take for this? Because um, for our next meeting, I think we should we should set aside a fair amount of time. on the agenda for continuing the town plan conversation. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm wondering uh, if you'd like to continue talking about the specific goals in this chapter, um, if you'd like to. So we have, so you, thank you, Andrew. So as a time check, um, we have, we, we started this conversation around 710 and uh, at 810, we are moving on to the Jacob Krantz. So we have, about seven minutes left for this. I think we finally figured out what we wanted to talk about, which were these sort of higher level subjects. That was helpful, um, but good point, Andrew, thank you. So we've got a bigger scope of work ahead of us, which is, I guess, to also review where we may have initially thought it was, which is your goals, objectives, strategies, and actions. varies yeah and read as it yeah i was just scrolling through our, our notes from our google surveys back in the day um some of the things that haven't come up yet um are uh partnering with hoas there are a few in the arzd um there was one gentleman who came to the wild wild Wellston and said i Our, our HOA is mismanaging our open spaces and mm. we want to restore some of the meadows we want to, but we don't know where to start and <clears throat> some support. Um, so I think um, creating connections with HOAs and the um, ARCD to maximize the value of the function of their land um, would be a good thing to mention at some point. Um, another one, <clears throat> was uh, streamlined permitting for development sites not that are not in the growth center. So finding, and I think it falls under the, probably falls under the goal around uh, adaptive reuse stuff, but basically making sure that we're not making it harder than it needs to be for somebody to keep it livable, keep a parcel livable um, in the ARZD. And, um, and then the last thing, which I think is already in here in one of the goals is um, making sure that we're prioritizing things that are close-ish to the growth center so that new housing, so we already have our priority parcels based on a bunch of criteria, but we weren't really thinking at that time about who could get to that parcel if, it get, if public access gets added. And I think that could be good too. But other than that, it looked like we had most of the things from our notes. I'll just add, nor were we thinking about equity, diversity, and, mm -hmm. and resilience yeah. at that time. So that might be another lens to look at yeah. areas we value. So I think that there's, there's still a lot that we can talk mm -hmm. about as far as um, what these objective strategies and actions um, should look like. So should we spend another hour on this in the next meeting or half an hour and try to stay Uh, focused. Um, what are what it what is the appetite of this? We have business to attend to, but we also have this um, to work through. Can I just? Can I? Oh, sorry. Maybe I saw Reed and yeah. Eric also raise hand raise hands, right, and I, I just started talking. Well, right. I just I'm just wondering if this is like. the level of hashing out that happened, this is like good for collaborative remote work, mm -hmm. right? Like where we maybe track changes in between meetings, because I feel like there's there's a level of this that's like, are we wordsmithing? But I guess I don't know, maybe I'm off on that. And then maybe 
people don't actually have time to do it in between meetings, but I just wanted to put that out there that it feels a little bit like maybe this is like a, a track changes situation. Um, and then before I stop talking, I'll just say it's um, Sea Grant Research Week, and there's a colloquium today that I have to be at, so I'm going to sign off here in a minute. Thanks, Kim. Eric? Um, I think that uh, I agree with Kim. I think, I guess uh, for me, we spent a couple of hours now, or at least a couple of meetings talking about this chapter in particular. And I think um, from my perspective, I think it would help us if, if the next time we look at it, there is more of the, the, the chapter is more, more of the chapter, including the background area is fleshed out more so we can perhaps re react to what's in there. Um, Andrew's got a lot of really good feedback from the group now on, on all of that. And I think, I, I guess from my perspective, I'd like to, to see what he can do with what we've given him so far and then um, take a look at it again. Um, I think it also would be good for us to just focus on the, what you have on the screen now, the objective strategies and strategies and actions. I've, I've been drafting an email to send to Andrew with some of my thoughts on some of these there's i'm trying to stay out of wordsmithing but also thinking about some of the words that are used to make some of the actions in particular uh stronger um than what's currently drafted but i think i think that we need to spend you know we need to dedicate some significant time to all of these chapters over the next would you say and we have andrew five five meetings so I, I would suggest if we can fit an hour in at each of our next five meetings, that would be a good goal. An hour is a lot. Um, we, you know, we only have two hours every, um, four hours four every hours. month, four hours every month. But um, Andrew, what do you think based on that feedback? What What is going to be most helpful for moving the process along? Is it more time spent talking about these concepts at the goal, objective, strategy, and action level, or is it, as Kim was suggesting, more wordsmithing and review of a more polished product? So I think it's a combination. I agree with both. Um, I think the original intent was that if you do have the time outside the meeting to read through and make comments, that's great. I also understand that you're busy people and that it was not always easy. Summer is coming to an end. <laughs> Um, um, that's cool. yeah. And so I, I think to Eric's point about putting some more time into this, I agree. And I think for our next meeting, having uh, to move on from this chapter, mm -hmm. I think there are some, some comments in the conservation chapter that are worth discussing. Um, and maybe if your homework is to review that chapter in the comments and add comments as you see fit, um, either in response to those comments or in, in response to what's okay. in there. Um, so the next 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 meeting will be focused on the conservation chapter. Yes. Read it in advance. Yeah. I was having trouble making comments. I okay. couldn't either. Yeah. So read only. Can we get access to the document? So I. It should be accessible through um, a link that I sent you via email. Um, that said, there is another way that I can do it, and SharePoint is, is confusing. Um, <clears throat> you're probably going to get three different, or actually, we'll start with conservation. I'm going to send you an email individually for the conservation chapter, and it'll just be that I shared it with you um, okay, I see. To, to do this yeah. editing. And so look out for that, and that should should be able to click through and be able to, to comment. Um, and maybe that's the best way to do it. It's that as we go through chapters, I'll send you something after the meeting mm -hmm. that is, you know, here is the next chapter for the next meeting. Go in and, and take a look and comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think back to the kind of broad overview, we're looking for um, key things that, that we might be missing, um, key things that you think are important. Um, yeah, um, so I encourage you, if you have time, to, to look at the conservation chapter before the next meeting. Um, and I think then we can we can have a conversation um, about the, the goals, objectives, strategies in there. Um, hopefully it's, it's a bit organized. Mm -hmm. Great.
That sounds good. Thanks. Sounds thanks, good. Andrew. Um, I, thanks for the reminder on that. I forgot that you sent us out individual links for these chapters, which explains why I couldn't edit it today. <laughs> but what what email address did that come from when you sent it last time? Because I could probably just find it in my email. I'm not seeing it coming up under a search for you. It was it was from my Williston email. Um, oh, it was an agenda right. for the, um, I want to say it was the July 17th. Yeah. These links didn't make it reviewable, so they didn't work out. Yeah, it didn't work for me. Okay. Okay. We, okay. We, yeah. Sure. We'll, we'll work on it now. But we'll get some. We'll get some feedback going and making sure that the links work, and then once they're working, we'll get them out to. So today, I'll send you. I'm. I'm basically just going to use the share function in SharePoint. Yep. You'll get a yep. automated email that Andrew has shared this chapter with you. Okay. If you know, if that doesn't work, someone can hopefully just let me know. Okay. And we'll, uh, we'll I'll consult Emily, who's the, the... I have just like one observation about this since I moved from a Google campus to a Microsoft campus. And that is that like, if people have non-Google emails, the SharePoint works better. So like, if like, I'm Andrew, if you send it to like Kimberly.Coleman at uvm.edu, I'm sure I'll, it will work. But if you send it to my personal Gmail, I'm sure it won't work. <laughs> yeah. so if that like if people have microsoft or non-google emails that they can give andrew i think it that's my observation is that it works much better and that if i'm in sharepoint and i try to share something with a colleague who's on a google campus they almost never it almost never works it's always glitchy i think the two systems just don't speak to each other All right. okay I'm going Let's to see Grant Racing this week. Bye, right. everyone. Thanks, Kim. Bye. Have fun. I will. All right. I see Tim and Lauren from Winooski Valley Park District. Welcome. And excited to hear your updates. Yeah, so good. It's like you've been spending some time with Jacob Prance with the GPS mapper. Not too recently, but... Uh... That was last, okay. I guess, in the springtime a little bit more. Um, okay. Did want to try to get out there earlier in this week, but been cleaning up down trees all over the place from that windstorm. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I think we had, I guess, some exciting, you know, it's not quite exciting news yet because it's not all done, but, um, you know, our conversations have evolved and are, um, I guess, progressing with global foundries on, um, the ability to have a parking lot where we've been looking at for a little bit. Um, I guess it's interesting. I, I see Jason, who I assume is Jason Starr. I know he had called here yesterday. Um, the, you know, I, I guess part of our conversation today is sort of like public outreach and stuff like that. Um, and we have discussed, you know, a lot of this in the past. Um, you know, as the plan has, you know, been evolving since, you know, 2019 and things like that. So um, there has been a lot of stuff about Jacob Kranz, I guess, at, you know, previous Conservation Commission meetings and even select board meetings, I think, over the years. Um, although Nick has probably discussed that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I guess the newest conversation with the Global Foundries attorneys, um, who is mostly being done by our lawyer, um, but looking at first, I think we were hoping it was going to be an easement or, you know, we were just hoping to get any type of public access basically, but, um, rather than an easement on the parking area, I think they are looking to, you know, we might subdivide that out, um, just cause it would reduce global foundries liability, um, which is, you know, that actually just to have them donate that in a way, I mean, I guess this, you know, I'm not sure. That I would use the word donate yet or anything like that it might be early in the process for that. Um, and I don't know if that should be in any newspaper. Um, cause, but, um, you know, we're hoping to get some type of public access to the parking lot there. And it seems to be progressing, um, in all the positive aspects of that. Um, so I don't know, that's sort of the first domino to fall or when we get the, um, I guess the okay from, their lawyer sort of to discuss it and know that, you know, there's nothing going to stop it now, but um, I think we're feeling pretty positive about it. 
That's uh, great. So, yeah. Tim, to just linger for a moment on that parking, because we were literally just talking about accessibility and uh, <laughs> of Williston uh, uh, as a town and um, res residential accessibility to parks and open space. So that parking area is basically where most Williston residents will have to sort of park or any Winooski Valley Park District user will have to park in that parking lot. And what what the you're saying, the current talk about is that Global Foundries will in one form or another transfer the title of that area of the parking lot permanently into uh, park district uh, ownership. Um, is it, and then what happens with the access uh, through uh, to the actual parcel itself? Is that a is that a uh, easement or is that also going to be a some form of title transfer? Um, good description. Now that's exactly the desired outcome. And then that that trail after the parking lot would be uh, that would be an easement um, connecting to the Jacobs parcel. Um, and you know that would be. I think it gets into some of Andrew's and our notes from previous time there. The, uh, you know, that might be moving a little bit around where it is. Um, all of that might depend on, you know, where the solar panel um, array is and, you know, when they start doing their work and everything out there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, it sounds, you know, we're, we're hopeful. Um, and it seems as though everything is going well. Um, the most recent conversations, I think, with uh, Global Foundries, um, attorney is going well. Or their employee Nathan is who Nathan Fisk is who Nick is talking with. Um, but not seems seems promising for sure. That's or great. Has progressed more than it ever has in the past, you know, handful of years. So um, that's great. So there's two documents in this agenda topic. Um, the first is a um, a nice little trail map of what we think the draft trails would look like. That's what I was referring to with uh, what clearly uh, Tim might've had the pleasure of going out with the GPS and, and, and mapping those. But then we also have a outreach and um, a strategy note that uh, I wasn't sure who created that, whether that was you or, or the park. So I, um, yeah, I'd love to share on the screen. Once again, my computer's being uh, difficult. Uh, the document was originally drafted by Simon, and um, I'm not sure if you'd actually reviewed it previously. Um, okay, yeah. There were timelines, draft timelines in there that um, we've, you know, were beyond now. Um, and so the goal in, in bringing that back was to update it and um, kind of get an idea of, okay, what are the next steps um, as we're getting closer to, to getting the go ahead from global boundaries? Um, and I think the two main things to, to focus in on were that the public outreach and um, kind of related is the um, discretionary permit process through the town. Um, and that that discretionary permit process might also be um, kind of part of that outreach process as it's required to be. Um, and so, yeah, I guess. Tim, I'm not sure if you want to talk about, we, we just went back and forth a little bit on um, outreach ideas. Um, I could also read you if you want to see it. Do you have it up? Do you want to share it? Yeah, I'm up. <clears throat> I hope so. Not really. I'm able to share. Great. Um, I can also kind of talk to this, Tim. Yeah. Sure. Better to, to look at it. <laughs> so. Is that large enough for people to see? Mm -hmm. I don't remember seeing this. I don't know if it was before your time joining. What? Said, no, you said, it's no, it, I think Dave, you might not just not have been at that meeting. We were, we, we looked at this, um, I don't know, like February or March, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so the update is, sorry, go ahead, Tim. Oh, you can go. I, it, it seemed like your updates on this were pretty well written. Um, you know, so the action on that first step there was the parking lot transfer trail easement. Um, still, you know, I guess to be determined um, when that would go. Um, our attorney had been out of town until the beginning of August, but I know people have been talking last week and seems as though it's uh, progressing. Um, so sort of same thing for title search. Um, the draft park layout, I know Andrew had a, uh, there was one other form that was with the minutes, I believe, that had sort mm -hmm. of a newer trail map that David was talking about there. Um, you know, it doesn't get too into like details of, um, you know, info board, a few other things like that, that, you know, we certainly would have at the park. Um, discussion on uh, you know, fencing along the neighbor's uh, yard there. I know Andrew mentioned we did meet with the neighbors, I guess, way back in April, I think. I'm not sure, a while back. Um, well, also with somebody from like the, uh, I guess, from the state farm agency, um, the state representative guy that was there, not representative, but, uh, you know, their employee, um, he was pretty confident that, you know, they might be able to get fencing for the neighbor. Um, in some manner or other, which was was pretty great to hear. Um, so you you know we maybe will follow up with them. Um, you the know they, yep. they also had because he was talking about maybe some shade trees and things like that. Um, or not shade, more like privacy trees because the neighbor. Um, you know it's sort of I don't know if it's commercial or um, small scale, you know medium scale chicken farming and stuff going on there. Um, so they were a little. You know, we were worried about dogs and things like that a little bit, whereas they were more worried about, you know, what are people going to think on Chicken Slaughter Day a little bit. Um, but, you know, I think people will be walking past that and um, shouldn't be too much of an issue, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, so we have sort of the draft park layout. Um, I think we're waiting uh, for many things just from attorney info um, about, you know, subdivision what we're going to actually need for that um you know because we may need to get a portion of the property surveyed for that um in which case we were hoping to learn from global foundries in our last conversation um who they had used for a surveyor out there um just so that you know might be able to get that done relatively quickly if somebody is pretty familiar with the property and the parcel um but yeah i think from that info hopefully we'd be able to get our drv um ready to go you know hopefully in a timeline the next month or two would be our hope i think it all you know all the dominoes sort of fall i think after we talk to global foundries and I, I think we're pretty you know ready to go on most aspects of things out there uh, the trail itself it's compared to some of the different accesses we've looked at it's um mostly you know a lot of it just goes along the side of the field and once you get into the jacob uh, parcel it's sort of like an old road or something i guess so the um and with the other topography there it's you know we're sort of set where the trails are almost just from how people have used it and things like that or i guess you know unless we learn something about the natural habitat there where we want to avoid something but it uh you know so that stuff should be relatively smooth going hopefully um reed's got his hand up hey tim i have a question for you um i think i don't know if it's actually an, an actual butter but the, is it payes auto is that the other um the next thing headed east on the road there have, have we spoken with them i do not believe we have actually um unless andrew has it all but um I guess in part of the outreach, which was sort of some of the conversation today, I think we were going to discuss, but um, I guess when we, you know, that was, do we want to reach out to neighbors beforehand or do we just wait till we do the DRB? Um, Cause I know we're going to have to reach out to a butters as part of that. I would assume. Um, I can, um, I, yeah, the DRB process, well, we are going to do the, uh, the pre-application and the discretionary permit. So that will be two public hearings um, about this project. The pre-application um, is a sketch plan phase. And I think that, uh, like we were talking about, we 
kind of have an idea of where the trail is going to be. Um, the specific design for the parking lot uh, hasn't been, been created yet, um, but generally the idea is that it will be very, very similar to what's there um, to reduce the, the need to not only, you know, build anything else up there, the cost of that, but also cost of permitting um, given the location. I think it's near some, some wetlands and, um, you know, much more straightforward if, if we use what is existing. Um, and a gate, right? The, there is a gate. That's, so. yes, it has been discussed. Yeah. Um, and so the discretionary permit, we do um, require that, you know, there's, there's a butters notified as part of that. Um, and Tim was just getting to the, um, the outreach. And I think that would be a, a helpful item to discuss today um, as kind of a, a game plan for outreach. Um, so in addition to the discretionary permit and having those public hearings um, for neighbors to attend, um, the other things we talked about, and this is further down in the document. Okay. You don't mind. Um, <clears throat> this one? Yeah. Um, is that was the, the previous list um, that we had. We were talking about um, an article in the Observer, um, info and, and web pages on Winooski Valley Park District's website um, could also be on the towns. We can, we can share that. Um, and then to encourage email comments um, through those web pages and host some walks um, in that area, um, I think would be, I think those would be a, a nice alternative to the public hearing and maybe better to, to do those before the mm -hmm. DRB hearing or at the very least before the discretionary permit um, when the, the real review of the proposal occurs. Um, Pre-app usually happens and then you have about a year, you have a year to uh, file a discretionary permit. See Gary, I just had a quick comment. And maybe this has already been decided, but have we decided what's allowed in the park in terms of like biking? And, My question, you know, is you know, various uses, and and how we'll monitor them. Is it, is it down yeah, farther? Park management. So, yeah, 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 but there's not. Is there anything in that? Tim can speak to that. Okay, great. Thank. You. Um, some discussion, I guess. Um, there is a draft management plan. Um. I think it's been shared around before sort of follows a lot of, you know, park district generally have pretty much the same rules throughout the district. Um, generally no mountain biking in the trails, unless the trails are like designed for, you know, there's the bike paths through the homestead in a couple of areas. Um, but those are more various easements with like uh, Burlington and the city. Um, you know, I think with the various other, you know, mud pond and other nice biking services or areas around, I guess, you know, this is sort of like an out and back. So hopefully it wouldn't be too desirable of an area. Um, generally we do, you know, park district rules are sort of dogs on leash in parks. Um, you know, our, our main goal is to sort of be conserving and protecting wildlife. Um, you know, we do our best to talk with people out and about, but I know Williston in many areas is under voice control, um, but generally we we do ask for dogs to be on leash. Um, but yeah, then you know, stay on trail. I guess it would follow most most park district rules is our our thought. But certainly, yeah. you know, part of the public discussion I think is is you know going through some of that for people for sure. Um, if, if the management plan is not like up for discussion so much as it is just informing people about like this is this is how the park district manages the space then it seems like communicating that through the walks through town meetings uh however you know that outreach should be done that seems appropriate to me it doesn't seem like we need a whole comment period about the management plan or anything like that right that's what it's feeling like I think that's a fair assessment of not wanting to uh, create a perception of of allowing for comment when you know yeah. there's already a, yeah. a decision. You could say here's this has already been determined, you yeah. know, but but there's you know other discussion can happen unrelated to that. Yeah. Reed Wells just had a comment. Oh, 
but I can't see it. <laughs> it's, in the chat. it's in the chat. I don't know why the chat and it's I agree with my connection. I mean, if that's been decided, yeah. it shouldn't, it shouldn't right. be up for discussion. Yeah. Other than informational. It's not like Cabinet yeah. Community Forest where it was. All right. Reed says perhaps as part of the public outreach and courage suggestions for park names, the sooner the better for the town to identify a park name. We have two ways to reference the parcel of Jacob Prance at Global Foundries. So to minimize public confusion, it would be helpful to have a consistent yeah. name. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's also a good way to engage the public because it really truly is something that the town needs to decide on for mm -hmm. sure it's sort of fun fun way for people to be thinking about it or um you know maybe it's something we are promoting on the walks that we take and we're like hey we do need you know a name for this um you know as people learn it or you know people in the neighborhoods are sort of using the parcel already so they might you know have some ideas or be familiar with the feature out there that we're less feature familiar with to, you know, sort of name the park after would be pretty cool. Um, you know, I think due to the park's location, is it, it's out of any hunting zones, right? It's, I think it's in the Williston on the right side of 89, so that hunting wouldn't be an issue there to begin with. Although I think we have run into people hunting there in the past. Um, but park district ruled are no hunting as well. Mm -hmm. And trapping as well, no trapping. Uh, yeah, no hunting, trapping, fishing is allowed. Um, you know, if people were duck hunting, they were be able to go over to the river through our property is is completely fine. Um, I'm not sure that there is pressure for that down there, but um. okay. Um, so we have a couple minutes left to finish up this discussion. Um, so it sounds like public outreach should focus on lay of the land, what's in the park, what the uses are predetermined on. Sounds like we have a neat opportunity to do some public outreach around the naming. Uh, you know, that, that could be really fun to get the schools involved in as well, you know, as long as it's not Parky McPark face or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that could, that could be... <laughs> That could be a fun. That could be a fun way to get the town engaged in a sort of naming contest of, of sorts. Um, anything else you need from us, Andrew? Um, and then my, and then I have another question for Tim about next steps. I have not answered it. Okay. So Tim, how? Right now, Andrew has this as a standing agenda item um, on every meeting, just to keep, especially as you're as the lawyers sort of work through the details. Does that sound appropriate to you? And um, can we keep you uh, uh, or or Nick or Lauren on the agenda? And if you have an update, you come. And if you don't, just give us a heads up, and we'll and we'll take you off. Definitely, yeah. I think that sounds like a good way, and then we can. Uh move forward as soon as possible when it uh, works out, which would be great. Yeah, we want to be able to move fast. So cool. Standing yeah, I was also thinking for, uh, you know, doing these walks, but some kind of like invasive removal out there on a walk would be like a fun way to to be like, uh, you know, show people that we want to like take care of the land and stuff like that as well is important. You know, not that just we're doing this trail and we're coming in to do something, but you know, we want to improve the space uh, for everyone to use as well. I feel like it's good to show. So that's a great idea. And I really um, I think we can as long as there's public access and everything is sort of set up, we could time something around green up day in the spring and, um, you know, maintenance uh, that 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 type of stuff, I think, would be great. It'll also help get people familiar with what's in the park, you know, just by being out there walking. it. It's a great idea. I mean, one thing I know you might have to go, but with the, uh, you know, I don't know what Global Foundry is going to be doing for like the road that they're going to have to make to get the solar panels out there. But, you know, you were mentioning um, like accessibility. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, maybe we stay in the loop with them. And, you know, because right now it's a, you know, it's a dirt path that's going out there, which is only, you know, it wouldn't say that it's certainly not ADA accessible. Um you know, but who knows with like with the road they lay out, I guess the topography of the own land there. But, um, you know, it is something on our mind as well to try to make places more accessible and things like that, too. So, um, you know, we'll just keep that in mind as we go forward as well. 
Can I quickly follow up on that, Tim? Sure. It'd be nice to know what it would take to make it accessible from our standpoint, because I think that's one of the things we're trying to involve as many people as we can in these projects. So even if it was a shorter loop that made it wheelchair accessible or something right. like that. So I guess the part yeah. that would be, you know, if we have just an easement over global foundries, I'm not sure what they're, you know, yeah. that might be a, a five-year conversation. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now's the time to talk to them about it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's why I was sort of thinking that. Just say, hey, can we modify this and improve it, or how's that work? The Krantz Trail, or Jacob's Trail, as it's labeled on this map, is quite, I mean, it's an existing trail, but it's like a class four kind of road oh, so trail. It's, it's, it, well, it's very rocky. It's not even. But it's not like a little teeny trail this wide. It's not a single track. Um, but if if we were to ever create an ADA level accessibility, I would think it would be coming in from that other area, from the from the west side of the property, to the neighborhoods. Yeah, there. personally, so I don't because that will that that's a really long. I mean, it's a nice it's a nice stretch. It's very level, but. I guess it's interesting because now when you go out there, you're like, oh, this would be a nice like birding area. But I guess at some point it will be solar panels. So it becomes less, uh, a little less of a nice meadow, but at the same time. Okay, great. Well, uh, Tim, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you or another rep uh, from the park district uh, in two weeks for an update. For sure. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Lauren. Um, I saw you guys were talking about the Commons Trail next. I might uh, hang out. I've worked out there before, so I could give you some info, maybe. Cool. Feel free to hang out. Um, well, uh, is... so, well, Tim's going to hang out. I do need to leave to head up to my office, so I got to sign off. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Have a good one. Thanks, sir. Yeah, sir. Do we have quorum then? Yes. Yeah, what is our quorum? Four. It's four. Yeah, great. Four or seven. Yeah. Yeah, because we're missing a commissioner, obviously. They're still waiting for that appointment. So as long as we have four, that's good enough. Great. Just wanted that that known for the record. Um, Commons trail maintenance. So I have to um I have to uh hand it over to Andrew. I don't know anything about this topic, but I was surprised um because it's not on our website. Is this an actual like town trail? <laughs> it is. Okay. Um it's not it's, on our website. It's a smaller trail. Um, it's not on town land. Um, it's on the the um, communal land for the uh, HOA. And um, I'm, I'm sorry sure. to ask you again. Sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> my computer is still having a tough day. I think you're going to need a full reboot there, Andrew. It's going to cost you, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll start with this. The, um, the Commons Trail, maybe just uh, actually, if you want to go to the last slide, I can just, the, there's a map there. Um, the Commons Trail is, is just on the edge of the village. Um, the Commons is the red line. Um, yep, the red line there on the trail. And you can see uh, there are some wetlands and wetland buffers mapped there. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can see that whole parcel um, is owned by the Commons. and uh, you know, you, you have the access up on Tower Lane on the, the right side of the map. Um, so, Reed, if you go back up to the your first slide. Thank you. Um, so, staff has received some uh, comments from the community about maintenance on the Commons Trail. Um, and I'd, I'd like to mention that uh, just in general, capacity for trail maintenance has been lower this year um, due to fact that our um, seasonal trail uh, worker and she kind of she went out on that trail back. as you're as you're familiar yeah. um, and so um, that has been been part of the maintenance there but it's, it's been slightly more complex than that um, there is quite a significant poison parsnip problem out at the commons and um, you know it, it's now at the, the point where it's it's burning out um, but at peak around like June, July, it was like eight feet high over my head um, and pretty much lining the entire trail. Um, pretty, yeah, that the field is um, pretty full of it. 
Um, additionally, um, I think this is a, a perennial problem. Um, there are Phragmites that grow over the boardwalk. And so there, the trail goes out from Tower Lane and about um, halfway across the, the parcel, there is a, um, a boardwalk and it is just a Phragmites grow even pink taller. Pink here? Um, no. So no, actually, the, here. Um, it's kind of between those two areas. The, so, the yeah. Google Maps of this area is actually like you can see the boardwalk much more. Clearly. Okay. It's pretty substantial. Um, so there are pictures in there as well that we can we can look at. Um, but so that's that's another aspect. And then read if you go back to number one. Um, <clears throat> our mowing contract has been just for the section between Tower Lane and the boardwalk, which is uh, just to. Um, probably about half of the trail. Um, I think getting a mower out on the boardwalk is a challenge. Um, and if you came from the other side, uh, I forget the name of the road. Uh, well, Timothy Way, all the con see, you didn't mention this, Andrew, but the trail continues on and goes all the way to the condo communities and houses, I think, are that are also back, you know, off of Timothy. Off of Reader Road? <clears throat> Is that uh, right? So it's, Timothy uh, Way. It's off of Timothy. I'm not sure if it's Timothy. Is that an official part of the trail, or is it, it just? Is. A, I would say yeah. yes. It's not on the Commons property. You can see the red line. Yep, it continues over, over here. There. Yep. And so getting a mower up that section is also a challenge. It's um, much more steep over there, mm -hmm. and most of the uh, wooded area doesn't need mowing. But the area that's um, on the what is the, the left side of the map here are still on the Commons parcel does need maintenance and it's um, sort of a question. Um, <laughs> and then lastly, um, Reed, if you just go back. Yep. Sorry, I'm going back to No, it's okay. Um, there has <clears throat> been a trail that's been ma maintained kind of informally between the Commons and uh, the town maintained trail. And on the map, it's highlighted in pink. Um, and I, I have some concerns over wetland encroachment in that area. Um, mm -hmm. There are cattails in yeah, the field, and there. that yeah. area isn't mapped as a wetland on any of our maps, uh, but that's there are wetland plants um, mm -hmm. present. And so, um, you know, I, I think that the value of this trail to the, the Commons um, Association is, is high, um, and I can see the, the benefit of if there's mm -hmm. a connection, but um, that's not a connection that the town has maintained. Uh, and once again, my you know concern with with wetlands there, um, and so we can we can kind of go through this and discuss it possible solutions. Um, I think that you know as it is the the trail is is really um, right now it's basically a dead end. You get to the boardwalk and it's fragmites like all over the the boardwalk. And talking to Melinda, that's been a, a constant battle. Um, and so that, that's a question mark for me. And then also, you know, not having a connection to the commons. Uh, once again, it's just sort of a, an out and back as it is. Um, and so looking for some ideas um, and, and eventually maybe a decision on, on what um, to do here. So if you scroll down, um, I'll just, we can kind of go through quickly. Um, Andrew, we have a, yeah. looks like we have a member of the public I want to open it up for yeah, introduction. Well, you yeah, invite me to come yeah, and, and talk. And so since you're at this point, we're discussing the trail. Um, and I want to just say, I'm just a member of the Congress community. I'm not on the board or anything, any capacity. And but you just introduce yourself to just Yes, I'm Deb McDonald. And um, okay. I'm a recent arrival at the Commons. I've been here less than a year. But I've had a number of people come and talk with me about the trail and how upset they were. And, so here's my story about the trail. I arrived last fall and I find out there's this great trail and it is. I walk under off Tower Lane, all these beautiful bright red sumac. I continue boardwalk, which is actually very well built and had no, I mean, the Phragmites are there, but they were being maintained at that point. And even though I know they're highly invasive, it was very awesome walking you know, mm -hmm. between these giant plants. But I don't know, if, Andrew, if you continued when you were trying to walk because it's almost impassable there, but it continues on through a meadow, down over a bridge, then it climbs up through a really nice white pine area. And when you get to the top, there's a, a really nice glacial erratic sitting there, right? I mean, it's, it's lovely. And then it continues down and up and into the, uh, 
I can't remember the name of that community. Pine, Pine, Pine Ridge or Pine. Pine Crest. See, I wasn't Crest, sure. Yes. I'm not sure what it is, but the one, the condo yeah. community. And so I started using that trail a couple times a week, brought family and friends. Everybody thought, wow, how lucky are you, Deb, to have this, you know, right in your community. And interestingly enough, most of the people I met on the trail um, were people from the other side coming yeah. through from that other community and using it. And because where my unit is, I look right out of the trail, I'd see people all day long with their dogs, with their families, back and mm -hmm. forth. It was getting a fair bit of usage. Um, I snowshoed, I even bravely ski parts of it uh, this mm -hmm. past winter. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I thought this is great. It's an all season trail and how nice it's kind of close to a community of mostly senior people so we can mm -hmm. get out. It's fairly level all through that first part, even through the boardwalk, pretty safe to walk. Um, and then I noticed things were deteriorating and I waited because I know that it's been hard getting employees in various spots. So I was being patient. But then the last time I was up there, it was pretty dismal as the mm -hmm. photos were showing there. And I thought I needed to come in and talk. So I saw Melinda and we had a little discussion. And I know that there's been talk about, oh, perhaps letting this go back to nature. But, you know, I know from sitting in this committee when I was subdividing my property, that having a trail was a big issue. We want you to put a trail in. We'd like a trail. Please put in a trail. I hear you discussing another trail just as I walk in. Yeah. So here's what I would like to say. I know this doesn't serve uh, a large community in a subdivision, but it serves two different types of communities that maybe aren't always addressed, a more senior community and uh, a, a family uh, condo community. You know, we were a little bit, I don't want to say marginalized because that is not the correct word here, but um, maybe not considered as frequently as some of the larger subdivisions are. I know the town spent lots of energy putting paths through woods to connect some of these other the subdivision communities, even put in a bridge to connect one of the communities to the bike trail. I don't think, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not asking much to say, oh, I know there's parsnip there, but I had that in my middle, you know, a big weed whacker, and you can take that, cut that back. Maybe not this time of the year. Now I'm thinking well, anything would wait till spring as it's just coming up and start to maintain it again. And the other thing I had talked to Melinda about, so this is an ask, but the little pink trail, I don't know if you can go back to the map, when we say it's being casually maintained, okay, it's being maintained right now by an 80, I think he's 83 or 84 <laughs> year old man with a weed whacker whose wife told me after he weed whacked it, he had to go lay on the boardwalk. He was so tired for 20 minutes till he could come back down and get back to his unit. So I'd like to ask, I mean, this doesn't seem quite right. If the town could possibly mow that stretch and then yes, there is a little, I want to call it a boggy area, right? at the base where it connects, right where you're, the other end, you keep up down there. If we can put in um, maybe three or four lengths of boardwalk on, was the word punch-ins that you told me, Andrew, on punch-ins, um, to just make that completely accessible, that way the community, you know, for those who have a harder time walking all the way around and up Tower Lane to access the trail can just come straight up and on to the top. Because uh, we can't have senior citizens out there with whackers. It's, that's not right. Um, so that's just my my feelings about it. And thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, and Lawrence, Lawrence. This is exactly the type of connectors and trails we want to maintain. Exactly. We're talking about, especially that <clears throat> other community. If they want to walk somewhere, they have to go out onto Route Two, which is they don't even have any sidewalks yet. They don't even have yeah, sidewalks. Right. That's right. So they have this trail that they can access Tower Lane, which is pretty neat. And then they can access the sidewalks if they want to walk to Adams even. And to have the commons community of older people just, you know, walk out their back door and get to that other trail is fantastic. And it could even maybe even enter at a different spot if it's foggy at that one spot. So, and who... I know that the town is responsible for the trail, but my question is who's responsible for the field and mowing the field for poison parsnip? Is that the town or the HOA? So we actually have a, um, the town hires a contractor to mow the trail. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, yeah, it's just the section, just the trail up to the boardwalk from Tower Lane. So the HOA could hire not a the pink piece, not the No, pink piece, no right. that's the gentleman with Lee yeah. 
you know, you talked about another place. I think right here might be where the Fragmites are and the board that's right correct. here, right? You know, there's always a possibility of bringing this trail instead of here, bringing yeah. it out here and have access with a mower. Because this area is really pretty up all through here with the white pines and stuff. That's really, mm -hmm. really nice. And you can even walk the other way. Mm -hmm. Jerry. I just was going to comment a little bit. You know, maybe we should have the wetland delineated so that we, we right. do a good job of minimizing impacts in the wetland. And and as far as who maintains that piece, I, I'm, you know, I don't know if it should be the town or not. I mean, I think the community could, Commons community could contribute towards that, not, not necessarily with people doing it, unless there's somebody that's healthier or younger or whatever, but maybe- well, we don't have mowers. You know, no, but so I'm just thinking if, if it's, you know, yeah. if we have some estimate of like cost per foot you have somebody per year, somebody maybe they could, maybe yeah. they could contribute some of their monetary resources someone is, into yeah. it. Someone is mowing the, the green space. Yes, yes. Right? So we have Top Dog Landscape comes okay. in and mows. Right. So like, would you... But Top Dog can't mow right here because it's too wet. But like I think if we do a, some kind of need. wetlands delineation, we probably maybe can find a better place to put that through. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and if it, if it's a matter of the town paying for this and then it's determined that, you know, for $300 a year, they could also mow that, the same people that, well, that your that community can much, contribute to. It. Yes, but, and that would make sense yeah, to me. I think that know. may be doable. We'd have to talk to the guy or the person that mows it. Mm -hmm. But I think the wetlands an issue, and who pays for it is an issue. I'm not a I'm not a delineator, or at least I haven't been in a long time. But the um, this area right here, there's actually a little connector trail that goes. Through yes, it goes along here. a beautiful street. Little uh, so yeah, this is that's... this is slightly elevated. Well, you can see yeah. from, yeah. from the trees that yeah. it's this is this is all right, you know. So maybe we don't need a delineation. We just need to be aware of other options to to yeah. maybe move that to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think generally 100% agree with what you're saying, Laura. This is exactly the stuff right. that this committee should be here for and to support trails and access and accessibility. Um, the real question is, is like, we don't have a budget or a resource to, you know, approve anything like this ourselves. So you mean the maintenance portion? Are you talking about the yeah, additional yeah, trail? Yeah, yeah. The maintenance or even that additional trail in a drier section but i think you know what what andrew's pointing out is a fair concern which is that the current access that has been maintained by weed whacker is not gonna is ne probably never gonna be like mower accessible because of the wetland nature of the soils and the region so like we have to find a drier path to get to it Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, and if the HOA decides to, you know, mow the field, like hire a brush hog. You oh, would... we don't mow the fields around there. You mean the connection trip? Oh, I thought no, you know, I thought getting rid of the poison parsnip in the field. Oh, no. Um, uh, so that, that's listed just... on, the, um, on the poison parsnip slide is um, possible. Maybe we should look through these. Yeah, um, so just looking to address, that's kind of one of our issues here. Um, I think my point in bringing this up is that it's it's such a significant problem that it would take a large amount of time. And so maybe the committee could, um, you know, commit to helping treat that. Maybe we could set up a volunteer day to, to spend some time taking care of the existing trail. Um, that's one thing, you know, to, to pull the parts in. Um, the other kind of way that you address parsnip is, uh, as I understand, is much more frequent mowing of that area for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and that's... Well, Do you need to not own like a, a DR brush mower? I mean, I used to have one of those back in the day. They can handle quite a bit. Um, <laughs> hello. So, uh, I don't know. We used to... The Newski Valley Park District has helped um, maintain that trail at some points in the past. Um, you know, that is actually what we used was like a brush, DR brush hog, like a walk behind brush hog. Um, you know, I haven't been out to that trail in a few years, but I remember the parsnip was getting pretty bad, you know, even a handful of years ago. Um, you know, so I think at that point in time, I, you know, I think they go out there with like a John Deere 
not even a tractor, but some kind of like riding mower, you know, so they're not capable of like really widening that trail. You know, it's probably like a pass out and back. Um, but for that parsnip, it would be nice to, you know, widen the trail a little bit because, you know, honestly, the the meadows that are out there have so much parsnip and, you know, volunteers aren't going to be able to like go pull. It's like millions of plants. Um, yeah, that's, that's it, it would have to be like 10 years of repeated mowing. Um, so you almost got to like focus on, you know, widening the trail and making the place, you know, encouraging people to stay on the trail when they're out there um and just like yeah, sign like eight feet right tim like if it's like it's like eight feet instead of four feet then yeah and then at least those eight footers are like flopping in when you get into june and july yeah. you know and you know and just paying attention to those because you don't also want to be out there like weed whacking it that's where we get like nailed sometimes on some of the early uh parsnip if you're getting like just the leafy parsnip and it sprays you from the weed whackers uh right. a bad one um but then also um, so on the uh on the boardwalk out there, which, you know, I think we helped build at one point in time. And I was like, <laughs> I think that the idea originally, they sort of put it in some of that Phragmites to like sort of hide it from some of the neighborhoods because due to traffic or something where I was like, I always saw that as going to be like a maintenance issue. But, um, you know, we, the, those like the DR brush hog, I think I, I've driven that like over those things and can do like a, you know, a pass with that. But then it was definitely just like a lot of like weed whacking um to basically open that back up and you know if it hasn't been done in you know a year or two um phragmites is sort of hard to weed whack it's got like a thick stem so it's you yeah know, a decent amount of work but um even some lopping probably but uh yeah you get over those boardwalks and you know and then that trail did clean up really nice like once you got past the boardwalk there um just with like the brush hog you know i guess it would be interesting if there's any like as you were saying a different trail that like came from that neighborhood if you could get you know enter on the end of the boardwalk and be able to like mow there um although mm -hmm. i seem to remember some pretty steep slopes that um you know our brush hog could go up and down but the mower might have some difficulty on um but yeah then i know we were able to get to there was like a culvert sort of in the woods over at the timothy lane area um but yeah i do remember that rock area and stuff there was pretty stuff over there it's interesting to hear so I was always like, oh, I wonder who actually uses this trail. So um, it is. <laughs> yeah. Here they are. Here we are. Here yeah. they are. And I wonder, like, there was a bridge that went over a stream there that I feel like I've repaired a couple times. Is that with all this? Yeah. Bridge is still intact. Yeah. Nice. Good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. You know, some of that stuff has been, you know, contracted labor that we've sort of helped out with in the past. Um, you know, we could discuss with Andrew and, you know, I'm sure we could try to you know, if you guys were interested, try to get out in the fall and at least do a, you know, one thorough cleaning. So it's set for um, like winter time or something like that. Um, you know, I don't exactly know how many like hours it would take us, but, um, you know, I'm sure we could figure something out to get it going. But, um, but yeah, that second section without like a continuous, you know, smaller walking brush hog um, might be hard to access. I like that idea, Tim. Thank you for volunteering yourself to that meeting and volunteering Andrew to uh, for the site visit. Um, would you want anyone from the Conservation Commission to join you for a meeting like that? I mean, I don't know uh, if we need a meeting or if you want us just to go out there and like clear it out. But yeah, I think that like the main intent here is, um, you know, I identified this as, you know, this is something that if we would like to continue maintaining and probably maybe change a little, a little bit the effort and and time and money to do that will be more significant. And that's why I brought yeah. it to you. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think, yeah, like I can, with your direction, um, talk to, to uh, Tim about just contracting that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It may be something that we consider, you know, we have the mowing contract with, um, you know, another uh, <clears throat> contractor yeah. uh, for many different, pieces of town land, this is one of them. Um, this one, it's it's a little bit different. It needs different equipment. Yeah. You might want to use a different provider, provider basically. Mm -hmm. Right. It'd be also interesting to get, if if that provider can do it, to get an estimate of how much additional money would it take to mow the connection yeah. between the commons mm -hmm. and, the, and the trail that mm -hmm. we currently mow. I think we would, I think clearly there's interest by the commission for a follow-up on this to sort of know what the scale uh, to sort of make it usable. And 
make it permanent and um, have it be like officially maintained on both sides of that boardwalk um, and then come back to us with more information. But I think generally there's strong support for it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hearing some notes from previous times about how many hours it used to take us, you know, if it, if it's really grown in now, it might be like longer for a time or two or the first time you go out there to really get it back yeah. to wide yeah. open trail. But, um, you know, normally, um, you know, I think it was relatively short, you know, there's not tons of branches and things like that. So it was more mowing, although some of the pine used to need some lopping. <laughs> Thanks. And, and Andrew, I would just add to that, that, um, given that it's not on the website and it's not a, um, officially recognized trail, but it is a corridor that's identified in the town map as being desirable for connectivity between um, the, the the village area and the- Toward the growth center. Towards the, the growth there. center, not all the way, obviously, but it's- a, I tried to find and, a trail too. I can't yeah, find it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the to-do list, don't worry. Um, yeah. I've tried to find it. I, I would be interested in access and if someone from the public were to use this where would they where would they park how would they access it parking would be on tower lane and there used to be a sign that said the commons trail right, there. right? really nice mm -hmm. wood sign white That's brown right. uh yeah, gone. I've, never, I've never been on is tower. it gone yep i think split in half now it's gone after the last storm i couldn't find oh, it wow. oh wow okay. so so, so there's not even a sign. So there's yes. parking on, on Tower Lane? It's Tower Lane. Living. It's not a lot, yeah. but, you know, it's street parking. It's street side. parking. Yeah, so and, a few cars. Or kind of a few cars, yeah. You know, I'm yeah, not imagining yeah. 20 cars guess, lining up. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, so once. I'm hearing um, a few different steps. I think we should schedule a follow-up to discuss this at a, another meeting. Um, I could follow up with Tim and talk a little bit about the history there. Um, and maybe we can get an idea of what it would cost for them to to help us there. And also follow up with our current contractor and see if they have any ability. My understanding is that they don't, um, but I haven't I haven't asked. So I can do that. Um, could also walk the upland area that um, that um, Dave identified and just just go out there and see if that looks and like I would a, be a happy possibility. to walk with you. Okay. So let me know when you're yeah. going out because I walked that trail many 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 times. So great. Um, yeah, so that we could maybe identify that as a, a possibility. Um, I'd like to see making the red line functional be the priority. Figuring out the mm -hmm. pink might take a little more time. We're going to do some walks. We're going to do some conversations. Yeah, so but part A and part B. Yeah, yeah, the second was just an ask, but the yeah, first can, was a plea. If we can get the red line passable, <laughs> that's, to me, that's important, Dave. Mm -hmm. Great. Then um, let's... Let's call that a day because we're past time at this yeah. point. Um, and we will uh, see everyone in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Parents. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you. For thank you so much for letting me speak. Well, well thanks for raising it too, because you know yeah, we're not out there walking all the time. So yeah, right. no, we, enough people have approached Usually Anne would too. be so right. Our trail's through Anne. There's already an informal. Well, the fact that it's not even listed.